In this video, I will be explaining how to use R for making polynomial interpolation. So first I'm going to explain the idea and then I will give you an example. Finding a polynomial that goes through given points, for example, finding a polynomial like this, y equal 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. This is a polynomial of grade 2. So the grade of the polynomial is always the maximum exponent of the variable x. Assume that we want to know the polynomial of grade n that pass through n plus 1 given point. So we, we know n plus 1 given points and we want to find a polynomial of grade n that passes through these points. There will be situation, many situations in which you have n plus 1 points and you can find a polynomial of grade n. For example, if you have 4 points you can find a polynomial of grade 3. Or if you have three points, you can find a polynomial like this of grade 2. Or if you have only two points, you can get a polynomial of grade 1. So, okay, assume that we have points, like for example, three points, and what we are going to do is finding a polynomial that's passed to these points. So these points will be given like x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. So actually what we have is a list of points. For example, we can make a list in a table, and in the table we have values of x and y. In this case, for example, we have x1, y1, x2, y2, and maybe we can go until the n plus 1 point, xn plus 1, yn plus 1. So we have n plus 1 point, and we are going to find a polynomial like this. Obviously, in this case, if we have n plus 1 point, we are going to find a polynomial of grade n. So it will be a polynomial like this. When we have this polynomial, actually we are going to know the polynomial that passed through all the points that we have. In this case, we have three, so the polynomial that passed through these three points. If we have four, a polynomial that passed through these four points. So what is the idea? Because all these points are points of, of the polynomial, so it means that all these points satisfy the equation of the polynomial. It means that if I put x1 here, in this polynomial, the answer will be y1. If I plot x2, the answer will be y2. So I can actually say that all these points satisfy the, the polynomial I'm looking for. And this is the idea. So we are going to have a set of equations. y1 equal a sub n x1, and this a sub n is the coefficient in the polynomial. It will be a number that multiply x1 n, that is giving this x1, and etc. All the coefficients multiply by the variable with all the possible exponents of the variable until an uh, independent term that we can think that is like x to the power 0. So y2 will be given by this way, plugging x2 in the value of x, etc. If I put xn, then the value will be y sub n. So we can continue in this way until the last point, y sub n plus 1 for y and x sub n plus 1 for x. All of them all of these equations have the same coefficients, you see that? And these coefficients are the thing that we don't know. So actually, this system of n plus 1 equation is equivalent to a matrix equation. So this will be equivalent to an equation that have y1, y2, until y to n plus 1. All these numbers here on the left side of the equation can be written as a vector. And that will be equal to a matrix equation when a sub n, you notice that a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub 1 until a sub 0, all the coefficients appear in all the equations. So that is the matrix of all the possible power of the x multiplying a vector of the coefficients. And actually what we need to do is finding all these vector of coefficients. So actually, what we need to know is to solve this equation. And this equation, it is the 
very easy because this vector is just the value of y that are given in the list. These x are actually the value of x that are given. This is x1 to the power 0. This is x1 to the power 1 until x1 to the power n. So we have here all the power of the x1. Here in the second row, all the power of x2. And obviously, this is just an equation that can be written just computing the inverse of this matrix multiplying at, in both sides. So that can be written as just one equation. x a, so this matrix, let's call it x. This vector of coefficient, now I'm going to call it a, equal y, that will be a vector of the y's. So and I noted that the vector of coefficient a can be found multiplying by the inverse of the matrix x. And I noticed that this matrix is a, a square matrix. Maybe it doesn't have inverse, but if they have inverse, then multiply the inverse both sides of the matrix. And when you multiply by the inverse, obviously here will be the identity. So you can cancel. And here at the, at the other side will be the inverse of x multiplying by y. This will be the formula to find the vector of coefficients. So this is the formula to compute the list of coefficients. So we have the vector of coefficient equal the inverse of the matrix x that will be given in this way, all the powers of all the values of x that will be given. And this y will be a vector of all the y's that will be given also. So let's explain how to do this using a software. So let's explain this with an example. Find the polynomial of grade three that pass through four given points. And these are the given points. It pass the value of x and y will be minus one zero. So it passed through the point minus one zero. Also pass through the point zero zero. Pass through the point one zero and to the point when the value of x is 1.5 and the value of y is 1.875. We have four points, so the grade of the polynomial will be always one grade lower than the number of points. The polynomial then will be a polynomial like this, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And finding the polynomial actually means finding the coefficients a, b, c, and d. We know four points. So we know four values of x and four values of y. And obviously knowing that, we have some idea of the graph. The polynomial must pass through this point. This is the point minus one zero that appears here. This is the point zero zero, that is the second point, zero zero. A point one zero, one for x, zero for y. And finally a point one point five, one point eight seventy five. What will be a polynomial that pass through these points? So let's see, we are going to use the idea. We know that we need a matrix X, and this will be the matrix that have ones in the last column, but the other numbers, the other entries of the matrix will be the values of X, and all the power of the values of X until the gray three, that is the grade of the polynomial. So this will be minus one, this minus one to the power two and minus one to the power three. The same happened with zero. The second value of x, zero, zero squared, zero, three. And then the value of one, one, one to the power two, one to the power three. Obviously all this will be ones. And this will be 1.5, 1.5 squared and 1.5 to the power three. So this is the matrix of the powers of x. We can make this minus one to the power three is negative one. This negative one to the power two is one. This zero to the every power will be zero. This one to every power will be one. And this 1.5 will be 2.25, etc. So we can find the matrix of the power of x. So this will be 1.5 to the power three, 3.375. And we also have the vector y, so the vector of the value of y. So this is something that we need because the vector of coefficients, let's call it a, will be a, b, c, d. The coefficients in order 
from the highest to the lowest power of f. So let's find this value. There is an equation, obviously, we, from the previous slide. We know that a will be given by the inverse of x multiplied by y. So I can get r, and then in r, call pragma, or of course, first. So if you are in a session when you have an open pragma, if you have a called pragma already, you don't need to do it again. But in my case, I'm just opening an R, so I'm going to type library, open bracket, pragma. Remember, pragma must be in quotation. And after I have that, I will be entering the matrix X and the matrix Y. So let's enter these matrices. So the matrix X will be, so I'm going to type all the columns one by one until the last column of ones until R that this matrix is a four by four matrix. So that will be the matrix X. And we can type semicolon and enter the matrix of Y. I have already explained in all the videos how to enter the matrix in R. So type matrix as a command, then open bracket, then C as combine all the columns in order minus one c o one three was the first the three point seventy five was the first column the second column was one zero one two point twenty five the third column was minus one zero one one point five and the last column was the column of ones four ones and I need to cross this bracket that I opened it for c and type also the number of row and number of columns. Now you can also get the matrix Y. You can actually, after the semicolon, type Y equal matrix, and then type, in this case will be only one column, 0, 0, 0, 8, 1.875, and this is a four by one matrix. And enter, after you enter, the matrix R in R at that moment. And now the only thing you need to do is type the formula. A equal the inverse of X multiplied by Y. So A equal the inverse of X multiplied by Y. Remember the multiplication sign in R for the matrices. It will be the multiplication enclosed by two percent signs. And press enter. Now R know what is A. The only thing that I need to do is press A and enter to see the matrix. A and enter. And I see the matrix. So let's see what is the solution. The first value, it will be the value of the coefficient A, that will be 1. This value is minus 2.86 times 10 to the power negative 17. So this e minus 17 means actually multiply by 10 to the power negative 17. But the answer is zero. 10 to the power negative 17, it will be 17, zero be before these two. And then after the first zero, a point, a decimal point, decimal dot. No, this is definitely zero. Eh? Uh, and this number is negative one, and this number is zero. So if I type this, as the solution of this vector, it will be a it will be a equal one zero one zero, and that means that the value of a is one, the value of b is zero. Look at where is a in the equation, where is b in the in the in the polynomial c and d. So it will be this will be one, this will be zero, this will be one. So it will be then this the 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 polynomial will be this or better this y equal s cube minus x and in this way we solve any problem related to polynomial interpolation we want to find a polynomial that pass through some points now that i have the polynomial i can find any value in the polynomial i just need to substitute x here and find the value of y. If you want to, to see that the, this is correct, just given the value that you already have, for example, what happened if the value of x is 1.5,
notice that the value of y will be 1.875 or if the value of x is 1 notice that the value of y is 0 if the value of, one of x is negative 1 notice that the value of y will be 0 okay so this polynomial satisfy these four points okay with that i finish to explain this example and this problem and how to use R to make polynomial interpolation. If you think that this can be useful, it will be a good idea to subscribe or making comments. Subscribing and making comments makes this video more visible in YouTube and that will help other students. Thank you.